Kaluubis are so awesome. I love my Kaluubis. This is my Rufus Beak Snake. They're from Tanzania in Africa. And they're really, really cool. They're so sweet. Look at those big eyes. Those big eyes have diurnal pupils. So they're active during the daytime versus a nocturnal pupil, which is like a cat eye. And that's when they're active at nighttime. That's cool. <laughs> you going to prom this year? Oh, I, I got so many dates for prom, it's it's crazy. That's it's cool. It's crazy. I'm taking all the girls. They don't know I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs>
and oftentimes they station themselves by areas where bats or birds roost routinely, and they just sit motionless day after day, night after night, waiting for something to fly by. And as soon as it gets within striking range, they shoot out like a missile, grab it, and they wrap it up and hang off the branch and eat it. Because obviously, if they fall off the branch in the wild, they're falling a few hundred feet and they're not going to live through that. So they never leave the tree that they're uh, this nope. down? They'll, they'll shift from tree to tree, but they'll never ever touch the ground in the wild. Okay. Cool. You don't think that's good? That's good. Will it make you uncomfortable, buddy? I get closer. Yeah. I was asking his permission. You know, I don't want to make him upset. I speak on behalf of the snake. You see any of his teeth in the shot? No, but he's making that stupid face. Yeah, well, I've got really large teeth, so they have trouble readjusting their mouth sometimes. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, hi. So right now he's just readjusting, making sure everything fits. Their natural food source in the wild is predominantly birds, so in order to bite through all those feathers and actually get down to the meat where they can grab the bird and successfully hold onto it, they have to have very, very large teeth. I see. And these guys have the largest teeth relative to their size of any snake, I believe. Michael, what happened? <laughs> I don't know at this point. It's alright. Michael's our fish guy. And he made a flood, which is fairly common, I hear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not good. No, I can't figure it out. That's filling up faster than a drain. That it, it, wow. This is physics. <laughs> oh, it's not draining as fast as I want it to. What the hell? That's work, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's... Moment. What's Woo! Huh. <laughs> I gotta pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> what a baller move that was. <laughs> I would have said, Johnny, pick up my mess, and I would have walked away. <laughs> you guys know that he used to be a music teacher? I did, I was and a music teacher. And we don't pay teachers anything in the United States, so. So this animal is the re resulting offspring of Pickles, who is a het tea positive albino water monitor from our stock, who's third generation captive bred, bred to a wild hypo salib locality water monitor. We just wanted to get as much yellow as we could get into them, and it's like the color saturation on her is just silly, as Kevin would say. I don't remember, you know, I'm like right in this thing's face and it's not freaking out. And she doesn't care at all. This one looks like a girl. Are you telling that because it has a smaller tail and a littler head? Yeah, she's got a what? shorter face, and her tail base looks a lot smaller than a male typically would. What's the other way to sex these if you don't? Want to do it that way? You can x-ray them when they get bigger. But so if you x-ray it right now, nothing would happen? Yeah, it'd be tough to tell. Kevin's sick. He got the Tinley Plague. They're making eggs? Yep, making some eggs for some of our monitors, speed lizards, and heal monsters. Oh, the heal monsters eat that too? Yep, they absolutely love this stuff. And they love the eggshells, huh? Yeah. Your food's over there, homie. I know you're not a Star Wars fan, but these things will look just like the things that are on Tatooine. An escapee. Oh, uh, no! If they get on nature, they'll reproduce. It's a high-speed pursuit. <laughs> this is a Herman's tortoise. And you can see this animal looks pretty uh, plain brown right now because he was digging around in the dirt outside. But take a look. You give him a little wash off on the shell. Look at how beautiful that tortoise is. Really beautiful. And this he is looks, an adult Herman's tortoise. looks super happy now. Yeah, he's nice and happy. This is a Russian tortoise. And you can see the male's got a really big, long, flexible tail there. This looks Russian. A little bit less pattern to it. But another really cool, smaller tortoise species. Take a look at the marginated tortoise. They're called that because they have these little enlarged marginated scales in the back of their shell over there. Look at how pretty that is. Beautiful. Come over. Everybody wants to go to the bath. Pretty red This one's attacking the easy. Another Another red foot. Everybody wants to shower today, huh? The queen it is. Okay. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> He's a bad man. Oh, and all of his friends are getting the idea. Breaking the law. Breaking the, the law. Man. Chase after him. 
don't know if you'll catch him. Oh. Uh. Oh my goodness. Oh my damn. Oh my goodness. We going ham. <laughs> Yeah, for being slow, they're really getting all over the place. <laughs> I could it could be helping right now, but. Simba. Who doesn't like turtles eating corn? Uh, Kevin's all excited. He's showing me some bug. See? Some bug he's excited about. Some bug bugs. <laughs> We're going to show you some angel plidgets. So Andro Plidgets, say that again? Okay. Andro Plidgets. I can't spell it, but I can right. say it. This is uh, the common name for this would be um, K Scorpion or Tailless Scorpion. And uh, these are really cool. This is actually, I'm a complete bug freak. And this is one of my favorite little bugs that I love to play with. Uh, these are amazingly, I'm going to shut my phone down. <laughs> it's going to keep banging. Why don't you do more videos with bugs then? I need to get all this knowledge. Because I don't know what people want to see. I mean, because you have to... Well, I'm sick right now. I know so you're sick. I've been, I've been <laughs> sick. You tried to do a video with me yesterday and I ran away. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. So these guys right here. Here's an animal that has uh, incredible cryptic like camouflage. So generally they are the happiest being upside down, which would be in the ceiling of a cave, or they'll actually go into rock piles. This is an uh, African species. What's interesting about... All the different species, a lot of them look pretty much to somebody who's simple-minded like me. They look the same, very similar. But these are angel plidgets. Some of the really large ones are South American or Central American. But if you actually handle them with some respect, you can do very well. So their, their legs are very good for gripping. And this is a female. That's a female. Okay. So... This is what's really interesting. See this right here? This. Actually, these ones are on this one are, this one's broken. So these little, these are the little feelers. And, uh, but, you know, it's very hard to, to, to get, get them uh, shipped in immaculate. So you got to kind of like set them up and get them to repair. So I can probably find a perfect one. Get them to repair? What do you mean? They repair themselves? Well, the heel? As, as they're molting. Uh, so here is one that has a very, can you see that? So it's almost like a hair. Yep, we can see it. Okay, so that, that's a complete one. And what they do is, uh, since they live in the darkness, so they live in kind of uh, warm, humid areas, and uh, they're going to spend all the time hunting upside down in the complete darkness. So right now they're probably getting sensory overload because uh, being out in the light right now, but if I get... One of these guys to open it up. Can you see that? Yeah. This is spooky. Isn't that just? Yeah. That's a heck of a creature. Kevin was telling me about these could be in a monster movie. The, these <laughs> would make the ultimate monster because, I mean, the, the catchy part of these guys is incredible. So what they're going to do is they're going to basically, they're going to grab anything they can and they're going to draw it in and then they're going to just basically chew it up. Uh, some people, you know, don't realize you can handle them and uh, you really can. And you can actually even feed them out of your hand once you get them acclimated. Uh, they are truly wonderful. Let's see if I can get one with good. Some of them get a little grumpy. This one's probably a little grumpier. What, I mean, what can they do to defend themselves? Uh, they can just try to, there you go, perfect. One's hairs. Yeah. That's also, that's a girl. So we could bend that actually like around a corner, it looks yeah, like? Yeah, so see right here? Yeah, this yeah. Is, this is amazing. That is, so just kind of think of it as like, a, it's basically, it's a leg that's acting like an antennae, and uh, they can tell what's going on. So if this was a, a male, we're going to have a longer arm that extends beyond the joint of that leg. You say you can and, taste with these things? Is that yeah, they can, they can basically sense other other you know animals potential prey so right now we, we've done a pretty good job at scaring this guy uh, and uh, over time I mean they, they, they do actually think so as time goes on and you start doing more I'm just trying to get it to show its little pinchers as time goes on you can get uh, them quite tractable and they'll a lot of times they'll go underneath your wrist as they're uh, trying to be most comfortable. This one's on point, so you, I'm just trying to show you how oh, yeah. how crazy it is. 
But to some people, you wouldn't even notice that the animal's even there when I put it on a cork. So if I probably, let's see what I got under here. Get ready for this. This is where they're happiest. Oh, yeah. Like that. So that's probably a pregnant, there's a pregnant female right here. Oh, okay. There we go. And that's, that's a, this is a male right here. How can you, you just know, huh? Yeah. Jeez. Well, Kevin, bug, you don't do a lot of... I'm a bug freak. You have a huge, almost like zoo downstairs. We need to visit down here more. Well, there's a lot of cool things, but this is... This is really These cool. are really, really cool. And uh, they're as far as keeping them, you basically just you want to have uh, an, a nice area that gives them the kind of uh, structure that they need. You know, something that there's an, it can go underneath it, uh, keep them in a deep layer substrate. Uh, where humidity can occur, so I would take the substrate with a uh, peat moss, uh, cocoa peat, with some sand and some sphagnum moss on the top, and basically just uh, you spray it down, and you want it to breathe. The cage needs to be ventilated, so you don't want to leave them all wet and dank without some uh, kind of uh, air movement, because what happens is an animal like this can get a, a fungal infection. So if it's too, if it's too humid, uh, and they, they can't get enough fresh air, they're going to start getting mold and fungus on their uh, carapace, or whatever you're going to call it, the exoskeleton, essentially. I might give you the heebie-jeebies looking at something like this, but it's really it's just about your, your mindset. Like, once you actually give this animal a chance, they're, uh, they're very sweet. They're very, uh, you know, tractable. There's uh, nothing icky about them. They just look really, you know, gnarly to us because... Uh, Look at that thing. It's so long. It's so much longer than you think it is. Yeah. These are not generally easy to get to. Wow. I find uh, these to be kind of uh, often difficult. Jeez. If you guys want to see more uh, bug videos with Kevin or any, just Kevin being downstairs, leave a comment. One of the most important things, if you don't know a lot about an animal, but if you have really good husbandry and you're able to scale you know, the needs of the animal to what you're, you know, you're reading from the animal, that can make up for a lot of what you don't actually know about, let's say, you know, about the, where the animal comes from and all those different things. So just being good, uh, being able to key in on an animal's needs, which, which is kind of like some of my success, I think, is, uh, is important. So I do have employees that are really, uh, they're, they're really nurturing and that Nina. makes them better. <laughs> Nina's a really good one, better keeper. We've got to wrangle Nina, so if anybody, if you want to see Nina, tell us you want to see Nina, because we'll get Nina to do a Highland uh, millipede video. We can go over some basic care of uh, millipedes, and these are giant African millipedes. They're actually quite hard to get now, or uh, especially if we have captive-born ones, and that is a really rewarding uh, pet. They're very, very sweet. They're so gentle. And uh, they're, they're kind of rewarding if you like bugs.